Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brett Davis Unleashed at IQ Podcast in beautiful Coronado at Attorney King Studios and with my co-host today, CB. Yep. Just initial, baby. <laughs> She's going to do like a, a, have a sword. <laughs> Write her name right with a sword. Super easy. And Zorro. Uh, we are at Attorney King Studios. I think I said that already, but I would say it again. And we're honoring our nurse of the month. How are you? Good. How are you? Leslie Balk. Yes. Um, so did you want to read Leslie's uh, letter? Yes. So this uh, letter was from her sister, Devin Balk, and she wrote a, a novel. No, I'm just kidding, Devin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She, she put her heart out there. But she said, not even a month ago, we were all going about our normal lives until COVID-19 turned our world upside down. We now have a new normal, one that is a little scary and extremely uncertain. When people's lives are at stake, we often look at those who are fighting for those lives, as unfair as they may be. Currently, now more than ever, we are looking to healthcare professionals who are on the front line battling this virus so life can go back to normal for everyone, including themselves. Our everyday heroes are the lifesavers, and for me, I'm lucky enough to call my sister, Leslie Balk, our NDSN. Even before the rise of this pandemic, I've always given my sister so much credit for what she does. In her two and a half years of nursing, she's seen so much. She's seen so much, excuse me. She's witnessed people at their absolute worst. She's seen patients pass, but also had the privilege of witnessing people recovering and leave her in the best state then they came in. Nurses have an extremely tough job, one that can harvest a whole range of emotions as they care for patients in all different stages of health and life. While this can be difficult for anyone to process, Leslie is mentally tough, enough to never let <laughs> these stresses get in the way of effectively performing her job. All nurses are currently being overworked as hospitals are short-staffed and the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases continue to rise. But my sister is in a unique situation. She is fighting a pandemic while across the country from her, away from her friends and family. The day after Thanksgiving, left, Leslie left upstate New York to drive cross country to South California to start her journey as a traveling nurse. My sister has always been extremely independent. So it wasn't surprising that she was open to moving to the opposite coast, not really knowing anyone, to start a new chapter in her career. With the new living situation, job placement, and global health pandemic, Leslie continues to be the very hardworking person I've always known her to be, and that she's my everyday hero from Devin Balk. <laughs> Now, you may say, Devin is, you're the oldest, right? No, Devin's older. I know. I just want to compliment you. <laughs> compliment Devin, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, those are a lot of nice things for her to say about me. Um, I mean, with the whole pandemic, luckily, like, I have still taken care of, like, positive patients. Um, I actually had admitted the first two positive cases at the hospital that I'm currently working at. Um, so that was a little scary. I mean, luckily, we're not as in short of like protective equipment for nurses, but you know, they're teaching us ways to kind of preserve those resources. But at the same time, it's been kind of nerve wracking because they keep changing policy and procedure almost every week. And at one point it was changing every day. So at some points, like you don't know if you are safe because you don't know if you are doing the proper protection to keep you safe. Um, but luckily I've been healthy um, and I'm not in a super bad area where the cases have been like skyrocketed and I'm very thankful for that, but at the same time, I give props to all the nurses, especially in the bigger cities who 
are dealing with the lack of resources and seeing a lot more people pass away from COVID-19. It's still scary no matter, I feel like, what hospital you're in, whether it be big or small. But I mean, it just kind of shows that we weren't prepared for this. So I mean, I'm happy that I'm doing what I am. Like I'm happy to be a nurse, I'm happy to be on the front lines, but you know, you have to think about yourself as well. I mean, cause you know, if nurses get sick, who's gonna be there on the front lines to take care of these people, so. Leslie, what hospital do you work for? Um, I currently, so as a travel nurse, my contract changes every 13 weeks. So right now I'm working for Ventura County Medical Center. Okay. How's, how's everything going in Ventura? So far, everything's been good. Um, they were kind of preparing us for like this whole like surge of COVID-19 patients, but I feel like we kind of learned from New York. And as bad as that sounds, like because New York got hit so hard that California have, has kind of taken the better precautions and you know, we're wearing universal masking in the hospitals. Um, and I mean, so I would say we're better off than most other counties, thankfully. And a lot of the cases we have been getting out in the hospital are like people from like nursing homes. Um, because, you know, once one case is in that nursing home, it's literally just, there's, there's no saving it. It's gonna, it's gonna spread throughout the whole facility. And you're originally from New York. That's yes. where you were raised and born. And so being away from home and away from your family, how has that been for you? Um, I miss them a lot. I miss my friends a lot too, especially my nursing friends like back at home. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy I'm not home because, you know, there'd be that chance I could pass that to my family and I'd rather, you know, keep myself isolated where I'm not going to spread it to my loved ones. Um, cause for all I know, like I could be a carrier. I don't know. I've definitely been exposed to it. So, and then sadly, um, the old hospital, I was a permanent staff member, um, in New York, a couple of my friends have actually gotten COVID-19. Um, cause the unit I used to work on is a pure COVID unit. So a lot of my friends have actually been exposed and been diagnosed with it. Um, so I'm definitely glad I'm not back in that hospital as much as I miss it, but yeah, I don't want to put myself more at risk than I already am. Yeah, well, our hearts go out to you and your family and your friends in New York, especially the ones that have, you know, unfortunately got COVID-19, but there's always hope. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then they're, they're doing a job for you know, the rest of the people as well. Yeah, luckily they're all young, so they'll make a comeback. But I mean, just knowing that, you know, they tried taking all the, you know, necessary precautions and they still managed to catch it. So that just kind of puts it in perspective that it can still happen to you, like no matter what. What, what do you notice differently between uh, COVID-19 and the typical flu? Um, so basically what I've seen is, and the thing is, some of the people I've taken care of, um, they're not really in as bad as respiratory distress as like, you know, some of the people down in like the bigger cities. But um, I've noticed that some people who come back positive, um, they don't really have as bad as the symptoms as described. But I don't know if that's just because I'm taking care of people later on in their onset of the disease. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are requiring oxygen. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Or even some people, they come back positive and they're not even symptomatic, which with the flu, you know you have the flu once you start feeling those symptoms. Um, but I mean, and the thing that I've noticed too is that the symptoms last longer. So if anything, you can be sick up to 14 days while the flu normally you're about down for a week. Um, and I mean, 
they're similar in ways, but I feel like the more sicker patients, they're the ones being intubated. They're the ones that, you know, their lungs are, you know, not working or functioning properly. So I think that's the more symptomatic thing about it. And plus having people with comorbidities like diabetes, or if you have heart and lung problems, that's just going to affect you even more. So. That's good to know. Um, do you think this is going away? Do you think it's with us for a while? Is it, is it a forever thing? I and mean, what's your take on it? People are going back to work soon. So I that's going to be and, So I know that they're starting to lift some precautions. Like, and I get it. People are starting to go stir crazy, which I am too, considering I feel like all I do is go to work, come home, like, and that's all I do. So I don't see it going away within the next few months. If anything, the cases are definitely dropping, but as long as people aren't going to obey like social distancing, I don't see that going away. I really don't. And as much as that sucks and it's going to ruin everyone's plans and it's ruined, you know, my plans. And I don't know if I'll go home for the summer, which was what I was supposed to do. But if it's going to stay as bad as it is, like, I don't want to, you know, travel more than I have to, or, you know, put my family back at risk. So it's, it's going to probably be around for a little bit, I think. At least you're in sunny California. <laughs> I know. That's one perk. Hey, your tan looks great. <laughs> oh, how you got a tan, but you got a little bit of a tan. Yeah, I've been sitting tan. outside reading my book, but. <laughs> well, can we give her a rebuttal? Yeah. You want to see it? You ready? Yeah. I'm going to read, I'm going to read a little, uh, little, little thing for you. We honor and acknowledge you, Leslie Balk, as our nurse of the month. For February 2020. And we have a medal for you, and it says, um, you know, your name from Ventura County Medical Center, sponsored by Brett Davis Unleashed, and our website. Aww. And in the front, we have your medical. Oh, that's so cool. It's actually really nice. Love the color. And it's no, like the really strong so don't be anybody with it <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and email uh not email <laughs> whoa <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and i wish i could email it but i email it to you um as soon as possible okay yeah. thank you and you can take a picture and share it with us <laughs> i'm gonna send a few other surprises too but we can't we can't tell you what they are okay they're a surprise <laughs> thank you for everything you do being so selfless and you're you're the perfect choice I can tell. Thank you. You're representing a lot of people um, out there and sh showing them that even though yes this is scary you guys every single one of you guys are putting yourself out there at risk and um, we just want to say thank you so much and um, I can't wait to like see you on the medal not see you with the picture on the medal and, and share with us and Hopefully, there's, this is a little token of appreciation from um, IQ Podcast and Brett Davis Unleash. I'm just here co-hosting. <laughs> but uh, we're but, really she, but you're also the part of the IQ Podcast team, which is a very instrumental part of why we're, where we're at right now. That's right, baby. That's right. <laughs> Rec <laughs> recognize. Recognize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have you on my show sooner than later, okay. you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you and can't wait from here from you. Thank, thank you, you lovely so much. Me. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on Brett Davis Unleashed on IQ Podcast at Attorney King Studios. I'd like to thank Leslie Balk for being our nurse of the month and our sponsors, Attorney King Amon for. Indian Motorcycle of San Diego and Cosmopolitan Restaurant and Hotel. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you.